this morning, of course, the subsidy removal thing is still very much in the air, but not very much center stage anymore. Uh, NLC has seen its way uh, to announcing, uh, you know, why they will not indeed, as they had indicated, you know, do uh, commence the world, nationwide strike today. Okay, but it was about the it, it was about the removal of subsidy. But the removal of subsidy doesn't stay on its own. It it, it doesn't exist on its own. There are other things. There are things like the inflation rate, single exchange uh, window that the president spoke spoke about, uh, and then the subsidy thing. What is the interlink between all of these things? Well, I'm delighted that our guest this morning is an economist, he's a banker, uh, but then perhaps he's most widely known as a former governor of Lagos State. A big, a big, deputy. Yeah, for, for, former deputy governor of Lagos State. In the, uh, if that goes back to the Tinubu era, uh, he was deputy governor between 2003 and 2007. Mr. Sem, Mr. Femi Pedro. Uh, Femi, thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure. For making time for us. Thank you. My pleasure. Indeed. Um, so, as I was saying, I was just thinking about it, and who better to ask than an economist and a banker uh, about what is the interlink between uh, this whole matter of subsidy removal, uh, single exchange window that the president spoke about, uh, job creation, and, um, you know, all of that, it seems to be a package that most Nigerians are concentrating only at the moment on, you know, the, uh, the subsidy removal. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I must uh, give it to President uh, Bola Metinongo. Uh, he's a very intelligent man. <clears throat> he's indeed an economist. He understands the nature of the Nigerian economy. And he exemplified this in his inaugural speech. Uh, he brought out clearly his priorities. He started with security. Then he went on to talk about the macroeconomic situation of Nigeria. Mm. He touched on inflation, bringing down inflation, reducing interest rates, creating one million jobs as he had promised, bringing power, affordable power supply. Well, he hasn't quite created the million jobs, but he, he has indicated way. that yes, it is not going to be done. Yes. Yes. Affordable power supply to every household in Nigeria. And then the clincher he mentioned the for subsidy mm. remover. Unfortunately, everybody concentrated on the removal of West subsidy. And they left out all the goodies that he mentioned in his inaugural speech. And it was the first subsidy remover that manifested itself the following day when pump prices went up. And there seems to be some mini crisis being created in form of shortages. Uh, I'm happy that the kind of leader he is, very effective one for that matter, he swung into action, and against the threat of labor, he had doused detention. Labor has agreed to meet with government. A lot of interventions have been spread out to ameliorate the suffering of the masses. Mm. And let me come to that very briefly. Okay. The removal of subsidies itself is in the best interest of the nation and the best interest of the poor, low-income Nigerians. Yes. When you say, uh, sorry to interrupt, yeah. when you say in the interest of this segment of the society that is close to uh, President Tinubu's heart as well, yes. uh, the ordinary Nigerian, even indeed the poor Nigerian, um, in Lagos here, for example, it is higher elsewhere. When petrol has gone to 488, when you can get it uh, at that, vis a vis the poor, ordinary person, 488 per litre, is, it's a pretty penny. So when you say it is in their best interest, how do you mean? Yeah, you have to look at it from the other perspective. Okay. Subsidy comes at a cost. Petrol selling for 165 naira per litre, as against 440, 480 naira per litre, there's a difference of about 325 naira mm -hmm. per litre. Mm -hmm. Who is paying for that? It's like they are giving you 325 naira per litre, but they are taking it away from you mm. elsewhere. This is the same quantum of money that could have gone into the Federation account and could have been spent on so many variables, education, health, infrastructure, name it. But we are being deprived, 2023 alone, 
over 6 trillion naira was to be expended on subsidy up to the middle of the year. And in addition to that, many people didn't know this. Subsidy payments, as we speak now, is illegal. The Petroleum Industry Act was passed into law in 2021. It totally deregulated the downstream sector of the oil industry, which means that paying subsidy itself is no longer an issue. And it's not even legal, as you said. Yes. Is that why there was no provision for subsidy? Exactly. Actually, there is a misnomer to say that there was no provision or there was provision. Because the subsidy payment comes from the federation accounts. It's not from the federal government. It comes from the money that is being shared to states and local governments. Mm -hmm. NNPC says crude oil, ants dollars. Rather than pay that dollar into the federation account, he uses that dollar to pay the differential between the cost of imported uh, PMS and what is selling at the pump price. So that differential is the subsidy. So the money doesn't go into the federation account. It goes into subsidy. So it's like paying for one single product at the expense of so many others. So it's what economists call complete and total misallocation of resources. Okay. Okay. So President Tinubu did the right thing by making that pronouncement, even though it's already written. But let's swallow the bitter pill. When we were young, if you have malaria, your parents <laughs> will give you Nivaquin. <laughs> Remember, it's very bitter. If you don't take Nivaquin, malaria will kill you. Yes. But take Nivaquin, it will be bitter in your mouth, you will yeah. not like it, but it will cure your malaria. And so the this is the Nivaquin that we require. However, let me say this. The mixing point that we're not focusing on is those other aspects that President Nubu mentioned in his speech. Okay. This economy needs to be energized urgently. And energizing this economy means that we, are, we all have to be more productive. Because I was going to... We ask. have to work. Mm. We have to create a 24-hour economy. We have to attract investors, industries, manufacturing, small businesses. We have to attract them into our economy. Because I was going to ask that, look, uh, how, how do we, uh, one of the reasons we've heard economists talk about the way you know, the price of the dollar is going to come down is if our own productive capacity increases. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to ask, is it internal productive capacity and manufacturing capacity or from wherever we can get it? From, wh from, from, from wherever we can get it. Let me let me just you know try and explain something sure. in layman uh, point of view. The economy stands on three um, legs, and they are very important all over the world. The cost of money, interest rate, mm -hmm. the value of money, inflation rate, and the value of foreign exchange, because we rely on imported products. Those three prices are very connected. And today, our inflation rate is 22%. Our interest rate is higher than 22%. Our exchange rate is much higher. Our dollar, our naira is weak. All these three combined to discourage foreigners from bringing money into Nigeria. Because any dollar they bring in Nigeria within a year is devalued by 22% if inflation rate remains the same. Mm. And when they are repatriating their profits, if exchange rates is worsened or remains the same, they are repatriating with a weaker currency. So they are holding back. And so President Nubu has said he's going to tackle these three prices. That is a fundamental. For instance, this uh, removal of forest subsidy. In dollar term, Fuel has moved from 30 cents to $1.05. That's the impact of the removal of subsidy. However, it's more impactful in Naira terms because our Naira at official rate is 460. Imagine if the Naira had remained at 120 to a dollar the way it was in 2021. We'll not be talking of 488 Naira at the fuel pump. We'll be talking about 120 Naira. So that differential was caused more by the value, weakening value of the Naira. 
So the problem actually centered on the foreign exchange situation. That's why the statement that I'm going to encourage the central bank to work towards unified exchange rates is a very powerful statement. And I know President Tinubu very well is going to work towards this. If we can bring down the value of the dollar against the Naira, strengthen our Naira mm -hmm. by 200, 300% in the next four years, mm -hmm. this economy will bounce back. You know, it, it's this economy, and it's possible. It has happened before. It has happened in many other countries before. It's all the only solution to that is our productive capacity as a nation. When you go into the street today, you see able-bodied young men working, not working. They're walking around. They're looking for a job. They can work if they see opportunity. Just imagine, just, just dream that President Tinubu is able to persuade Toyota to open a plant in Ekwe. And Toyota comes, brings in like 10 billion US dollars. That is increase in dollar supply in the economy. A plant is built. We have to employ a lot of people and train them to produce Toyota cars. We don't have to import Toyota cars anymore. So the money we are using to import Toyota cars stayed in Nigeria. So our, dollar, our Naira strength is again. Immediately Toyota manufacturing plant lands in Epe. Battery manufacturers will move close. Michelin and Dunlop will come back, say, oh, we have to supply Toyota. A new life of economic activity is created. And in his manifesto, he emphasized, I want to bring back all the major brands into Nigeria. This is the panacea for all our problems. What? We don't need to look far. So let's leave the issue of subsidy. Let's face frontally the economy. Once the economy is stronger, the Naira strengthens, price of uh, petrol at uh, the pump will come down. There was a time in 2021 when international price of oil fell from $100 to about $20. A lot of people did not notice. But petrol price in the pump went down. Okay. Uh, went down. Because they didn't have to pay subsidy. They were not using subsidy. But immediately after COVID and the uh, Ukraine and Russia war started, prices jumped up. And we started feeling the impact again. Okay. But more importantly, is the value of the Naira against the dollar. That is the key variable in our economy. Everything around us, the furniture we are sitting on, the television we are watching, the car we ride, the petrol, the air conditioner, the fan, the food, much of the food we eat, are all imported to Nigeria. So, and he mentioned it in his speech that I want to promote import substitution and export. We've been saying it for many years. He's not the first person. But this man, President Snubu, will do it. Is determined. You understand the linkages of these variables. And um, when, when you look at um, what we were reported to be servicing our debt with, that's almost, they said up to 95%. Yes, 96% of, our, of now, our earnings. How does that work? 96%, yes. even just 4%, we wish to do what? That's the situation, that's the situation we, we, we are, we are now. now. Borrowing to pay salaries, to run the government. <laughs> to do every other aspect and it's unsustainable actually the subsidy regime is a monster a huge drain on our resources i'm even surprised that it has stayed this long and you know people have tried to confront it but it has felt to be dangerous because there are so many uh, rent seekers uh, arbitrage was among uh, the emir the former emir yeah. i don't remember he spoke at length about yeah, this uh, I, I understand yes i think we must not lose sight of one aspect and i will admit that it's the poor among us more than the rest of us because already there is inflation they are struggling wages have not increased over time. So their purchasing power has reduced. They are poorer. All Nigerians have been poorer, really, over the past several years because income has not risen mm. correspondingly with the level of inflation. Remember he also said that he was going to take a look at the minimum wage? Yes. So I'm happy when I saw the, uh, the statements released between TUC, NSC, and the federal government. And they listed some of the interventions, not palliative mm -hmm. interventions. Mm -hmm. 
There's, and that's by the way, is there a difference? Because I heard Daily Alaki uh, be emphatic on that word. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't even know that. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 there's a huge difference. Intervention. Yeah. Not pilot, pilot is like uh, calling people, come and take bag of rice. We are giving you, you know. Intervention is government policy to bridge, to stem the tide of suffering. And it comes in different forms. For instance, in that agreement, they mention something, they call it compression liquefied gas system. The plan, this was signed in 2021 between the Buhari administration and marketers and the, and the NFC, that over 2 million cars could be converted from using petrol to gas. Mm -hmm. and, so, and gas is much cheaper if compressed into liquefied form. It will just be like in form of a cylinder it will put at the back of the boot of the car and it will be connected to the engine and it will work. And that will bring down prices of uh, transportation considerably. But it was left undone. But this agreement said to be looked into and it will be handled. So this intervention are temporary. The permanent intervention is for President Tinubu as he has promised mm. to energize the economy. Mm -hmm. Once the economy is energized and there's activity everywhere, we want to see, oh, when I was a banker, I was a credit officer, I had many customers in Lagos who were manufacturers. I was in co head of corporate finance. I was dealing with the likes of Michelin, Dunlop, Aswani Textiles, Niken Tex, Mobo, Chevron, these were our customers, and they were manufacturing and producing. We were producing air conditioners in Nigeria. We were producing battery in Ibadan Exide. We were producing yeah. um, gas cooker and fridge. The company was in Isolo. Even when I got married, I bought my fridge and my gas cooker made in Nigeria from Isolo. I went to the factory, I paid, and I picked it up. We want that back, mm -hmm. and it is not impossible. What we need to do is solve those three variables, bring down inflation, bring down interest rates, and strengthen the Naira. And how do we do that? It's a vicious circle. It is. We have... They're all interconnected. Yes. President Nubo has promised power. Power is a key variable. If we have 24-7 power, we have solved 40% of our problems. Is that, is, is that doable? Is that a doable? Because 24-7, it seems like to the ordinary Nigerian, Nigerian like, like a dream, considering what we've gone through just, over the past. Just year. like President Sinubu being president, like a dream. <laughs> now he's there. He's going to actualize those dreams. Mm, mm. He will make it happen. Now, marketers... Uh, so let me also say something. Okay. Um, I'm happy that he's president. Because he's starting off with... A positive vibe, the goodwill is good. The same subsidy that the previous governments could not remove, Jonathan tried it, immediately reversed itself. And President Buhari for eight years could not do it. It looked like politically suicidal, but it's a very sound economic policy. It is, and uh, dare I say... And, and the, the average Nigerian initially, you know, started complaining, and then the same people have turned around to say, Labour, where were you all these years? Exactly. When Naira redesign was a mess, you didn't do anything, you know, let this government start well, let give them time, they will solve the problem. That is the positive goodwill. Every new government needs it. And it worked for Tinubu. It will yeah. work for him. It, it, because, it, it, because, because he's saying the right things and he's doing the right things. And people in the street that would have been, you know, that are really bearing the brunt of this yeah. are saying that it's tight, it's tough, but we have to manage it. I mean, people yes. are saying this yeah. themselves. Another, another thing I want to say is that, yes, subsidy payment is national, but the pain is local. Every part of the country. That is why the state governments are a key player in this scenario. The state governments are key players. They have to move fast to help the people. The who? The state governments. State governments. State government. We are not focusing on state government. We are focusing on federal government. But state governments have a huge role to play. How is that? And, oh, transportation. Let's start with that. Okay. okay. Look at Lagos. 
Uh, Governor Samuel has started the blue and red, red line. All he needs now is additional funding to expand it and grow it. If 40% of negotiations can move using the rail system, the issue of fuel crisis will abate. And so many other interventions are local. So this is what all governors need to be very creative. Very creative. You know, in Not only that, if properly managed, the gains from this subsidy is going to devolve down to the state level. Don't forget I said earlier on that the money for subsidy has been taken out from the federation account, not from federal government budget. So it's not only the federal government that has been bearing the brunt, the state and local government has been bearing the brunt. It has, been, it has affected what they are getting as federal allocation. So with the removal of this, more allocation will go to the states and local government. And we want to plead to all state go all the state, state government, the inflow from this subsidy removal should be channeled towards programs and policies that will help the poor and the masses. Indeed. Right? Nigeria needs relief. And like I said, wages are dwindling. Jobs are not easy to find. People are poorer and they are paying more for gas, for electricity, for recharge cards, for telephone bills, for so, so, for so many things. So, so they so need help. People, and, and it's a very big job. Remember, the, uh, I cited uh, the former Emir of Kano uh, who said that um, actually he doesn't, he doesn't envy whoever is going to take over from Buhari uh, because of the myriad of jobs that needed attending to. Um, the nature of our program is that it's interactive. So, uh, Reverend Dominic has called in. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Chibiori. Good morning to uh, Mr. Pedro. Uh, very gentleman. You are still the same. I know him since 2004. Uh, you may not remember me now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Now, you already let me say this. Sure. Subsidy must be, must be removed. Subsidy must be removed. Subsidy must be removed. You know, why did I say three times? It seems like if you don't believe that, you're a black cat in Nigeria. But you know, let me say this. You know, I supposed to be a middle class in this nation. I think I can boast of that. I bought 10 liters to 5,000 naira. You know, I sent my personal assistant to the east. He has not come back because he went a week ago with 15,000 naira. If you can hear me, can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Me? Yeah. Although now, they can help us a bit. Give us a bit more volume one. upstairs there. Mm -hmm. Carry on, please. My, my best assistant went to the East last week with a boss, 15,000 naira. And I asked him to come back because we have a budget in the church. Now it's paid 25,000 naira to come back from the East to the, back to Lagos. Your, Mr. Pedro, I knew him very well. Before being a deputy governor, he was a very a wealthy man as a good banker. He can afford to buy 2,500 naira a liter. Your, who made the provision for me? I don't work for government. The, the TVC can make provision for you. I don't work for government. Millions of us who doesn't work for government, who make policy for us? And we are many of us who are not going to receive minimum wage. Number two, your, let this be in the mind of everybody. There are some states today who have not paid 30,000 minimum wage. For instance, if we increase our wage to 100,000, how would this state pay? We have been borrowing money already to pay 30,000 naira minimum wage. Now we are going to increase salary, maybe from 30,000 to 70 to 100. And for the other three, four years, some states are not paying 30,000. You are listening to me. Somebody has come to this studio. Listen to me. There is no nation in the world that has no subsidy. I have a sister in the UK. He lost her husband three years ago. I called her yes, a, a week ago. I said, How are you managing? For a long time, he has no job. He said, You can pay me 50 pence. And my three children go to school free. And when they school in UK free, what is what is subsidy in Nigeria? Is it water? Is it electricity? Is it education? Every nation has subsidy. This subsidy will buy us up to hard because everything has gone up. To come buy a loaf of bread now. How my daughter cannot go to work this morning because I wanted to go to work at Tripod. What kind of system is this? We must have put politics first before we move subsidy. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much, Reverend Dominic. Yeah, he made a valid point. Yeah, he made, yeah, he made valid point. In fact, one point that he has made is that even the intervention that has been announced mm. is focused on salary announced for those who work for government and those who are earning wages. 
What about the millions of Nigerians who are not salary and so who work for private sector, yeah. minimum wage will not affect So what them, about them? And they are employed. I've told you, fundamentally, subsidy is really the minor issue in Nigeria. I'm telling you, fundamentally, the economy is safe. This man complaining, if the economy is booming, he will not complain. He will not even remember the removal of subsidy anymore. He will not remember the removal of subsidy anymore. He only has touch on is looking at the subsidy as that is making him poorer. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Before the subsidy, he was already poor. Do you understand? The subsidy just had there to eat. Mm. So why instead of tackling what had made him poorer, let's tackle what made him poor. Do you understand? Okay. I do, I go with the, yeah. origin, the origin of the, the origin problem. of the problem is the economy. The base is weak. The base has to be strengthened. And that is what is Yes, President Bola Mentinubu has ten fingers to work. One finger, this subsidy issue. Second finger, the petroleum sector has to bring sanity to it. Third finger, he has to work on unified exchange rates, strengthen the value of the Naira, give confidence to those who are bringing money into Nigeria and Nigerians abroad in diaspora wants to inflow money in and those who want to invest in Nigeria. When they see a stable exchange rate regime, a unified exchange rate, they will be happy to bring more money. More dollar in the economy, economy will strengthen. Industrialize Nigeria. Bring in manufacturing, attract them to come back. Let them see that this country of over 200 million people has a lot of leverage. And let's make our people work. We have, they say 60, 70% of Nigerians are young, below age of 35. They are energetic. They have brains. They are smart. All they need is opportunity to apply themselves. Let's make them work. Indeed. Let's make them work. Let me, uh, I, Power. I can list them. He has, oh, 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 okay, he, he said there are more. Uh, yeah, uh, because he listed them in his in, 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 speech. In, uh, please, please carry on, because yes. uh, Mr. Yakub, I'll be right with you. Oh, okay. But <laughs> but you know, you were just you you got halfway. Yes. Uh, these are essentials yes. that are going to be attacked. Right. Those are his priorities. And those are the priorities yes, so that have already been listed. Power. Mm -hmm. And he said, ah, inflation rates. I'm going to bring it down from double digits. He said this. Read really, this thing. He said interest rate. I want to provide, I want to build a credit-driven economy where Mr. Yori Folani and this young man sitting down here don't have to wait until he has all the money in the world to build a house to build it. or to buy a car. Yes. You know, everybody who lives in the United Kingdom or Switzerland or you, France you or Germany knows that you walk into a bank, you fill out a form, and then you drive a car out of the lot. And they will, be paying, they will be taking it away from your salary every month. We can't do that here now because the interest rates the banks are charging are will kill you. Mm. And why is interest rates high? Because inflation is high. Okay. And the owners of money must hand above the level, above the, the rate of inflation. So all this put together, the president has a lot of work in his hand and he has, is the one that has emphasized it. He has promised us, I'm supremely confident that he will deliver. Okay. Mr. Yakub, thank you very much for holding on. Please go ahead now. Uh, Senor, good morning, sir. Yeah. And then, uh, good morning to uh, your guest. Uh, Senor, I think uh, labor, labor in this country has failed us several times. And then, uh, this time around, we are not going to follow them. Because as uh, Reverend Dominic said earlier, all of us cannot, cannot work in as a civil servant. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a businessman. I, I do my thing in my loan. So, labor, cannot, labor is fighting for its organization, not me. And in fact, although you personally, if you're in authority, say maybe you're a member of a labor, but I'm opposed. <laughs> now, if labor says that they should increase their minimum wage, that is what is going to cause inflation again because every market will know that labor is not increasing. They are not giving them more money. <laughs> I agree, sir. Now, this particular labor that we are talking about, who are those people that do the uh, turn around maintenance in our own and our refinery? All this way, turn around maintenance, they are paying lots of billions of dollars. They, the, the refinery does not work optimally. So, they are not coming to tell us now that they are going on strike. Come on, strike. Based on what? See? If you are the subsidy of the team, must go. Because look at our labor country today. How much are they selling the, the, the petroleum price on our labor country here? Because Nigeria is subsidized the petroleum that goes all, all, all the way to Niger, the Republic, Cameroon, and all those areas. 
see the Nigeria has started adulting, for example, I'm trying to even buy a bicycle now. Because of that, some area that I don't even need to take my yeah. car where I've been doing before, but now mm. I've been trying to buy a bicycle so that I can be able to use a bicycle. If ready, let me shock you. Mm. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yakub, for calling in. I think you, it, you know what? Uh, yes. I, I, I've got to take a break now. At this yes, stage. So please, uh, hold your horses. We'll be right back, and then uh, you'll right. continue. You might want to respond to some of those things that right. Mr. Yakub said. Thank Stay you. with us, please. We'll be right back. In the month of June, the 4th of June, 2023, makes it 27 years since the wife of the late M.K. Wabiola, Kudurat Abiola, was murdered. 5th of June is World Environment Day. On the 7th of June, the global community celebrates World Food Safety Day, while June 12 is Democracy Day in Nigeria. Also, June 12 is World Day Against Child Labor. 13th of June is a day set aside for International Albinism Awareness, while 14th of June is World Blood Donor Day. The 19th of June is set aside as International Day for the Elimination of Sexual Violence in Conflict. It's also set aside as World Sickle Cell Day. 26th of June is International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. 30th of June is International Day of Parliamentarism. Brace yourself for the month of June and stay tuned to TVC News for special reports and analysis. Okay, uh, welcome back. My guest is Mr. Femi Pedro, uh, economist and banker and deputy governor in Lagos State between 2003 and uh, 2007. Before we continue, another caller has come on the line. Good morning to you, Mr. George, in Lagos. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and good morning to Mr. Pedro. Good Thank morning. You. Uncle Yori, for every decision taken, there's always a consequence. If we, are, if we have decided to remove subsidies, we must expect some consequences and some pains. So the issue, I'm happy labor in the first place has come to their senses because they were the ones who caused the pains in the first place. Our oil tech, Pengasan and uh, TUC were there when thieves, the so-called thieves, have been stealing our crude oil. They connive with them. They don't say anything. The National Assembly removed uh, a subsidy from the budget more than six months ago. Labor was there. They did not say anything. They were campaigning for a party. And that, that same party said if they win, they will remove for a subsidy. They didn't say. And they were at the campaign rallies. Only for them to come, another person has won, and that person has implemented removal of subsidy. They are now crying foul. It was a political thing, and I'm, I'm happy that someone, they have talked to them, and they listen that they have made a mistake. Thank you. But okay. for the pains of Kuyori, it must come. And the management of the pain is what we should be talking about. If you look at it, after these pains, the pains, I'm, I'm happy you have an economist, an economist there and foresee things. The way the, the, the system is ordered. We have to, that one is a corruption. But there, is other, there are other corruptions in the system that need to be addressed. Your guest is talking about. Um, we, 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 uh, thank you very much for calling in, Mr. George. We, we, we lost him there. Yeah. But the, the things he was saying, uh, well, Labour, well, the way he phrased it, what Labour has said that. It, well, let's you know, even move forward. Le, le, let's move Labor forward is on the table because now. Le, le, have, uh, Labor was talking about the need to stabilize. Yes, you know that yes. that probably is very important. Yeah, very, very. Everybody has been saying that that how do we cushion the effect mm -hmm. on the poor? Mm. And a lot of people are impoverished over the last few years, so everybody is affected. A large number of, and I've just mentioned to you that the bulk of the work is in the states. 
That's right. The state government have to rise to the occasion. They have to provide support for the poor in so many ways. Okay, they are also affected because budgetary constraints, they are a problem, but they have to lift themselves up. It's very important because the federal government cannot handle everything. It can only take care of what it could handle. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the body falls on the state and the local government. Okay. 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 In the short term, mm. why this is happening? In the medium term, Within the next 24, 48 months, President Tinubu's hand will be showing. We will begin to see the economy cooling, cooling off and getting energized. We'll be seeing things happening. Because of the very yes, things you've spoken about yes. earlier. And the way economy works is that confidence builds on confidence. When Mr. A is bold enough to take a step and bring money to invest, Mr. B in London is watching. Investors all over the world are looking for where to take money. To. That's right. And they are looking for where the rate of return is high. And once they see that opportunity, they will jump at it. Whether you are black or white or yellow, it does not matter. Colorblind. Whether that's money is colorblind. And no amount of sentiment or preaching foreign investors come to Nigeria. They will not listen to you unless we solve those fundamental problems. Okay. Um, uh, Abba, did I get that name right? In Benue, uh, Mr. is it Mr. Amma? Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Yori. Okay, thank you for calling um, in. Video. Please, I want to contribute to this stuff. Sure. You know, fuel subsidy of the thing needs to go. Really, it needs to go. But see, we are not focusing on things that will now be a remedy for this subsidy of a thing. What, I, what is my contribution is this. I just believe that what should have been done is Look at the price of fuel now. What are DPPRA doing? What is their work? There are no regulations. Everybody sells at will. Go to supermarkets. Things we know that are produced here at cheaper price are sold to the public at exorbitant prices. Nobody is there to control anything. So even if the subsidy is removed or is not removed, people will still sell at will. I remember even before the removal of the subsidy, people were even selling fuel at times 500, 400 at will. When they know that the other affiliation are both well, they sell it at the prices they want. So me and the government should be able to put on um, agencies on ground that will fight price control. That is just it. There's no need for saying there should be palliative. Make DPPRA or other government agencies that regulate prices come on board. And this, most of these things will be solved. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And then if I were to add to that, the fact that um, nowadays, uh, I think the marketers uh, groupings have, you know, uh, commended very highly the fact that now NMPC will not be the sole importer. Yeah. Now, you know, all of them can now yeah. search for. So that is also going to help, right? See, see, economic principle is very powerful, whether in theory or in practice. It has been tested all over the world. Okay? A free market with certain controls put in place is the best form. You cannot control prices. If prices are high in the market, it's either because supply has reduced or demand has grown up, mm -hmm. has grown higher. Mm -hmm. Equilibrium price will set. So when there's plentiful goods in the market, there's no need for anybody to control prices. Who controls the price of gari or the price of uh, yam or the price of bread? If you go to Sokoto today, you can buy a loaf of bread for three naira and you come to Agege, you can buy it for eight naira. Do you understand? There's no uniformity. It's demand and supply that determines it. Uh, petrol is no different from bread. It's only because we use it mm. to move around. Mm. Bread, we eat it too. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Petrol seems not to have alternative, but vehicle, driving vehicles has alternatives. So you you can take a bus that's used diesel, or you can ride on a train. Do you understand? So the, the free market is powerful enough. Let me bring to take in. Care of all this. Let me bring in uh, Bolaji, who has called in from Isolo. Good morning to you, Bolaji. Good morning. Thank you for calling in. Go right ahead, please. Yeah. And good morning, Mr. Yori, and good morning, um, Mr. Pedro. From good, our good, good, good morning. No. Good morning. Yes. Yes. I well, I quite. Uh, I appreciate what the. I, I appreciate what uh, Mr. Pedro just said. Uh, that um, yes, 
the, the, the state government, they have a role to play. But uh, yes, quite, 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 quite agreeable. But, but the local government also has to be looked into. You see, the local government should be involved. It's a third tier of government, right? And they are more connected to the, to the masses, to the grassroots. The local government should be energized and be made more proactive in creating wealth. We all know they need to be involved in so many things. <coughs> we are saying it's a policy radicalization, it's policy energi ener energization. But the local government, they are more connected to the masses. To achieve this, we need to ensure that the caliber of people that heads our local government should be looked into. They should be people of quality and purposeful, purposeful leadership. Uh, uh, the, the federal government, the state government, and the local government, they should all complement each other. It's very they close. should not work at cross purposes. Yeah, well, thank you very much, uh, Balaji. Appreciate your call. Thank you. I, I saw you agreeing with him. Yes, I agree with him. All tiers of government, all lands must be on deck, particularly at this period. See, um, re energizing the economy will take a while. Um, damages have been done for over 50 years. To correct it will not be an overnight sensation. We have to be patient and support President Tinubu mm -hmm. in his quest to rebuild But the work has economy. to begin. And it, that is it has what started, Tinubu is about. It has started already. The renewed hope. Yes. That, that it, campaign from on. day one. From the, the, that day that is All war. Yes. On hold. To do this and that. And he listed his priority. That is the beginning of the work. It's not hiding. He didn't come there to say, I'm for everybody, I'm for nobody. No. He's saying that this is what I'm going to do. And he said, I'm going to carry all Nigerians along. And he said that I'm not coming to dictate to you or to rule over you. I'm coming to serve you. So he that, said it. That would require rational explanation, yes. which I think is what yes. the president I just told want you. Nigerians to have confidence and hope in this government and in this economy. Um, when you think positive, positive things will happen to you. I don't want, I want us to lift up our spirit. I don't want this foil thing to dampen our spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are going on a bigger journey. Yeah. The foil remover, subsidy remover thing is a minor issue compared to the enormity okay. of what we are facing. Well, when you say it's a minor issue, I understand yes. you in yeah. context. In context, uh, in, yes. In context. But, uh, the people yeah. are feeling the pain. It's not minor <laughs> to them. I exactly. understand that very well. Exactly. It's not minor but, to them. You know, we, we're, we're going to, this too will pass. Yes. As the... Yeah, see, I don't mean to be cheeky. No, no, no. Let me just explain. I don't mean to be cheeky. The first day this subsidy was removed and the four pump price went from 165 to 488 at an NPC station, I sent my driver to fill up my tank. And it cost me 52,000 naira. <laughs> and I parked the car in the house. I am serious. Yeah. I just grabbed an old car, mm -hmm. small car that I had before. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I inflated the tire. Much more and fuel I, efficient. Very, very. You know. So lifestyle has to change. Okay. That's why they said that this subsidy, particularly for us that are in the upper class, we are the one benefiting the most. One person can have fleet of uh, SUVs. Fill up the tank, drive everywhere around, you know. So where do you put your brother who is the so-called poor uh, man in Nigeria? Uh, He's a Nigerian uh, ex too. Exactly. And the people like So that. let that money go back to okay. the Federation account. Uh, Tony, Tony in Port Harcourt. Good morning to you and uh, thank you for calling in, sir. Sorry, I'm not calling from Port Harcourt. I'm calling from Enugu. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry, Tony. So it is Tony in Enugu. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Yeah, please. Uh, I've listened uh, to all the contributors before now, and they, again, they seem to be playing this uh, ethnic stuff and all that. Now, the Nigerian Labour Congress, they said they wanted to go on strike. It is like that everywhere in the world. If the government seems to be going outside what the people want, whether you're a civil servant, or not. So, but some people are attributing it to the fact that labor is uh, probably the guy that is uh, for one ethnic group or the other, and labor is uh, just that kind of a thing. But I'll have to advise. Now, the local woman or the man, the farmer, 
in the rural areas, they are feeling this. Even if the labor has come to say, okay, look at this, they're not looking at the fact that maybe it's a Yoruba man and a Hausa man that is there. Let us look at the substance of what they are talking about. Not going to play, or is it because this man is there? Well, that this I, I, is I don't know. I didn't want to interrupt you, but you, you, what you're introducing into it, it doesn't really matter who the leader of NLC is. He doesn't have to be of a particular extraction. Yeah. Yeah. I That's think the connection is that Labour as a, as a union uh, campaigned yeah. and supported Labour the party. That is the only, uh, it's not a matter of the personnel. You get me, Good. sir? But, yeah, but some people are insinuating that probably because the man there, let me say it straight, the man there is Ibu and the labor man is Ibu. That is why they are lining to him. No. Of course, all yeah. of them said they were going to remove this. Uh, it doesn't uh, change the price uh, of it. Supportive of it. <laughs> it is, uh, 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 what's it called? I hear you, uh, Tony. Uh, I hear you, yes. Tony, but, um, but you know, it's... The point, is, the point is, why don't we go it straight to say, one, let us do this to cushion the effects of this. Yes. That's what we will be talking about. That's what they have to cushion do, the effect of yeah. a kind of palliative. Mm -hmm. Instead of, because this is to end in June. Why do we start it now? And you know this fuel cell has and all that. Once they hear, they will hold it and maybe expecting yeah. one pronouncement. They will yeah. go up. Yeah. Yes, I think that's what we should uh, yeah. concentrate. Instead of all this, oh, labor is this and labor is that. Okay. Thank you. Th you. Thank you very out. much for calling in, Tony. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I was a bit surprised, you know, by what you said. But I hear uh, the perspective that you took. But I don't think anybody has brought out any ethnic uh, no, no, uh, no, aspects to this at, at all. all. The, like I said, money the doesn't know. Labor could have been ethnic. He could money have doesn't have color. Bad. Doesn't know ethnicity. Exactly. You know, everybody is mm. feeling the pinch. I think the only thing all that, over the country. Exactly. So. The only thing is that Labor did campaign for the party, yeah. and uh, as was their right to do. Yeah, it's you know, yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah. But it yeah, has the, nothing the to do with thing, ethnicity. I'm, I'm happy that they have they sat down with the current federal government. They are working, they are exactly. talking, exactly. they are dialoguing, they've come out with mm -hmm. a communique, and they have listed out steps that they are going to undertake over the next period to alleviate the suffering and the pains the common man is going through. Mm -hmm. And that is a positive development. Indeed. And you know, it's, it's good that you've, you, you sort of uh, spoke about the difference between um, uh, 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 palliatives and, and interventions. Intervention. You know, uh, intervention is policy driven. Palliative is dishing out just, something. You know, and if you look at the list of what Labour and the federal government agreed, many of the items there are actually interventions. We are going to intervene and bring back the compressed liquid, liquefied gas uh, system so that many cars can be converted to gas instead of petrol. We're going to increase minimum wage. We'll review that increase and see how it will help a lot of people. State government have been directed to go back and see how they will alleviate the pains that the people are going through. And there are so many other policy initiatives that will start rolling out from now on. Mm -hmm. And President Tinubu is very much aware of the pains people are going through. He's very much aware. So, uh, so it's not lost to it. To as you said, yes. the, the damage has taken some time uh, to, 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 manifest, uh, yes. to manifest itself. Yes. And uh, now, uh, taking off on Tinubu's platform of uh, renewed hope, hope, you have said that, look, anywhere between 24 to 48 months, you begin to see uh, uh, an effect yes. uh, of a change of hand, so yes. to speak. Yes. Because um, if... The question, well, all presidents around the world, it's not just our president here, mm. they always speak about wanting to work on, uh, on, 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 on the employment uh, rate. Uh, the yeah, fact that to create, create jobs. Yeah, actually. create and, and create jobs. Yes. I think Tinubu has said that um, he's looking to create a million jobs in the short term, yeah. and uh, it can only get better from there. Yes. But very, very important, I think, is what you said earlier, which is that it's all, if we're going to bring an... The way you explain the interconnectivity between all of these things, and if we're going to increase our capacity, that's going to be because we are able to do much more work. Uh, in we, we need to put Nigerians to work. We need to create confidence in the minds of foreign investors and Nigerian investors to bring their money 
invest in uh, infrastructure, invest in industries, bring manufacturing plants back, get Nigerians, young people employed and engaged, uh, pump money into this economy so that small businesses can have capital to go, grow and build themselves. And power, is, power, so power, uh, power is a factor. Is a factor. Power is a factor. The inflation rates will start to come down. Naira will start to strengthen. Interest rate will come down, and the economy will boom. President Tinubu said in his uh, during the campaign that he wants to grow the economy, the GDP, by double digits. Let's even say eight, nine, ten percent. Mm -hmm. Eight percent growth in GDP in one year is huge. Right now, we are growing at less than two percent, and our population is growing at over two percent. So we have to feed more people with less. Mm. Let me we quickly, uh, Femi, let, me, let, let me sneak in uh, Engineer Haruna. Good morning to you, sir. Quickly now, we're fast running out of time. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for Good calling. I'm speaking with you and uh, Padro. The fact remains that uh, the labor union or the organized labor, they are doing this to their own benefit. Labor. I call it... Please continue. I, I call it a conflict of interest because... We have been in this country for years now, and our four refineries are not, have not been working. What major, what strike, what protests have they done to make sure the refineries come on steam? And some of them are benefits. They are paying them heavily every month. I'm a player in the, in the industry. And nobody should tell me that the subsidy is for the masses, for the poor people. No. They know what they are doing. He said that they are fighting just like the formal uh, speaker said, but because of their party or they are fighting for their own interests, they are pocket. You understand? We all know that if they want pressure on federal government, the previous ones, maybe by now, we'll have gotten our refineries working. And that is where the benefit from Pegasin is there. They are collecting salary every month. And you know the kind of salary they take. It's not one million, it's not two million. So what are we talking about? All they are doing is political. And they should go and rest. They should leave us. <laughs> Let's see what the uh, uh, will be, will be able Thank to bring on board for us. And again, Reverend Dominic, I normally listen to him. The way he's trying to compare Nigeria to other countries, we should not do that. There's, there are no basis for comparison. All right, I'm, I'm, going to have to, I'm going to have to intervene there, even though I know you. there's a bit thank more. You. Uh, thank you very much for calling in. I think we've, we've got your point. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, point you? You know, the point is well, well taken. Um, I'm happy that labor is on the table. So we should just not waste too much time talking about labor is on the table, yes. at the table, yes. talking. Yes, right. This is That's a good right. step in the right direction. It, it is. And so President Sungu should not be, will not be distracted. He will face frontally the, the ten fingers that I mentioned, and he will start to work on Nigeria. That is a bigger issue. And these are different times, hopefully, yes. with uh, President Tinubu in place. Yes. Uh, there the probably is reason for hope. To indeed oh yes be you can you can see between may 29 and now there's confidence building even when prices went up, people are saying let this man let's give him a chance maybe he's doing the right thing this is what previous government could not do is bold enough courageous enough that is the hallmark of effective leadership indeed. well I, I think we're gonna have to leave it here for me thank you but i want to thank you very much uh, uh mr you know femi pedro uh, economist and banker, uh, former deputy governor in the administration of uh, now President uh, Tinumbu when he was governor. So once again, thank you very much for making the time for us. My pleasure. Morning. Thanks. Indeed. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Our pleasure too. It. So and there you go. So that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folaren. Bye bye for now. total submission and gratitude to God for a life well spent, we announce the transition to glory of Mr. Tolu Ogunkoya, whose sad event occurred on the 25th of April, 2023.
burial events are as follows. Service of songs comes up at the redeemed Christian Church of God, the Sanctuary, Tom Allen Center, Stratford, London, date Tuesday, the 6th of June, 2023, at 6.30 p.m. Funeral service takes place at Greenacres, Epping Forest, Kiln Road, North Weald, Bassett, Essex, United Kingdom, on Wednesday, the 7th of June, 2023, at 11 a.m. There will be a night of tributes on Tuesday, the 13th of June, 2023, at Shiva Center, 20 Mobilaji, Bank Anthony Way, by FCMB, at 5 p.m. This will be followed by a commendation service on Thursday, the 15th of June, 2023, at the Chapel of Christ, The Light, IPM Road, Alausa, at 10 a.m. He is survived by wife, children, brothers, uncles, aunts, and cousins. 